You're watching Five Pounds of Sugar on Cryptovania. All right, thanks a lot for coming into the studio today. It's so awesome you took a few minutes out to come talk to us. Thanks for being here, man. Tommy, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here with you and Nick. Marty, how many years do you have in acting, or or how did it all begin? Oh, oh God, yeah, yeah. Oh, geez, Tommy, if I tell you that, it's going to reveal my age. <laughs> but uh, no, I've been out, I've been out in California for over thirty years, you know. Uh, and then I even did I started, you know, I started in my local uh, high school, you know, just doing theater stuff. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you've heard that. Uh, Cliche a, a big fish in a small pond. Well, I was a whale. I was a, I was a, I was a whale in a mud puddle. Okay, yeah, yeah. right out of the chute, man. I started booking the lead roles and all the plays and stuff like that. I got kind of spoiled, you know. Yeah. And uh, that really got me, you know, revved up and raring to go. Um, but then I got a bad attitude. No, okay, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I almost didn't graduate my senior year because I had a bad attitude. Mm. Uh, but I made a deal with my English teacher. I would I would write, produce, direct, and star in a one act play for a, a student film festival in Edinburgh. And I said, if I do that, you give me a pass or fail grade on the basis of the work. So I passed. Nice, you know. And uh, so that, I guess that makes me a hyphenate, right? A writer, <laughs> director, producer? Oh, yeah. Director. <laughs> Holy cow, I didn't know no, that. All of them, yep. Oh, I'm glad I came down and did this. I found something about myself. Yeah. All right. Uh, but so, so that's where I started in high school. But then I had many hiatuses, you know, along the way. Ended up working in an iron, uh, iron foundry. Ended up working on the railroad. All that kind of crap. Uh doing cross-country oil exploration, a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Also, I sort of did it on purpose, too, because I thought, I, uh, if, you, if you want to pro portray the human condition, you ought to know a little bit about it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you so, get your hands dirty a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I'm actually living proof that somebody, my backyard, butted up against the cow pasture, okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right? That's awesome, man. You know? Yeah. That is awesome. Okay, so I'm living proof that anybody from any circumstance, if they're, if they're, uh, if they've got, I kind of like, uh, I make this formula sort of like a Mercedes emblem, right? Okay. Like, like one third is uh, talent, one third is luck, and one third is hard work, you know? Get those doors together. Yeah. So yeah. If, if you get that, if you get that, any you know any one of those can be bigger than the other yeah but you know you get that perfect combination yeah and i like it you know and i think and they all i think i think truly though they're all they're all equal yeah you know there's i guarantee tonight there's five thousand very talented actors uh and would you like uh 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 uh, potatoes with that? Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, the unfortunate truth is, you still got to pay the electric bill. Until exactly. You oh, believe me, believe me, boys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, been, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's been very low peaks. I, I, you got time for a story? <laughs> oh sure. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. 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 Many years ago, before I had any kind of break, really, I was uh, making my living as a house painter. You know, uh, working for. Um, uh, uh, d design agency, you know, in uh, Beverly Hills and stuff. We weren't working for the agency, but they would hire my company, so our co not my company, but the company I work for, yeah. to because we were really good to, you know, do their high end jobs. And me and my best friend, who was an actor as well, we were painting in this uh, condo in uh, uh, this called the Sierra Tower. It's like the guy that owns Planet Hollywood lived there at the time. That's the kind of real estate yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, there was a carpenter working, and uh, you know he was, you know, not real tall and kind of a little on the stocky side, but you know, nice guy and everything. The reason I uh, the, uh, the description is important. I'll get back to it in a minute. But he's a nice guy, you know. So after the, uh, being around him a few days, you know, I heard him talk to the lady that owned the condo, and he had this beautiful speaking voice, you know, just so well, modulated and, and yeah. everything. You know, just so, <laughs> And I said, holy cow, that was impressive. So I, I, I go up to him, I go, hey, uh, Mac, uh, do you ever think of becoming an actor? 
<laughs> he goes, I was an actor. <laughs> I said, oh, really? He goes, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I said, well, well you know, what I... Uh, what I've seen you in anything. Yeah, I know any of your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, I was on the last season of Rat Patrol. Oh, my God. I just about <laughs> fell over. I, here, I, when I was a snot-nosed little kid, I, I would watch Rat Patrol, you know, and probably, okay. you know, rig up some kind of machine gun in a cardboard jeep <laughs> to, you know, kill the Germans. So here's a guy that's on this show. At that uh, moment, he was the king of Hollywood to me, okay? <laughs> a show I watched as a kid out in my little country house. Holy <laughs> Christ! So, so uh, then I said, hey, uh, what else, Mac? Well, I've done a few commercials. I said, well, Mac. I said, Mac. Because here I am. I'm, I'm painting because I, I have to, and I'm, waiting for, I'm yeah. waiting for my... Getting the, waiting for that gig to come by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a guy that's had, had it. Mac, why are, you, why are you working as a carpenter? He goes, well... My wife and I started having kids, and it got to the point, was was I going to wait for another uh, acting job to come along, or, or, you know, or buy that washer and dryer I needed? Yep. Yeah, I got a big choice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, wow, that scared me. <laughs> Yeah, you've done well since then, though. Yeah, you're not painting houses no more. <laughs> not when I, you know, not for a living. Yeah, yeah. I, I painted my mother's house in Florida a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, I still got to paint. Well, how can you tell your mother? Yeah, how can exactly. you tell your radio your old mother? No. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, I thought it would only take me a couple of days. It took me a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to ask you about too is uh, a thing with airplanes. You, you're not a fan of flying, is that right? Tommy, <laughs> Tom, Thomas, let me tell you something about that. I absolutely hate flying. <laughs> uh, am I afraid of it? Probably. I think my biggest issue, though, is surrendering control of my life, my safety, health, and well-being, to a middle-aged alcoholic who's playing grab ass, who's playing grab ass with the stewardess instead of doing his pre-flight check. Yeah. Okay. So every time I do get on a plane, I mad dog the pilot. You know, you can't say nothing because they'll, 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 they'll throw you in jail. Yeah, yeah. But I always mad dog him. I go, better mess up. And what I'm saying to him is, if you crash this plane, I'm going to kill you <laughs> before we hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not fond of it. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not in that. Um, the, the only way to take, the only way to fly is take a town, you know, go to the airport in a town car and fly business class or better. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not at that level. Uh, <laughs> You know, I can so I can sometimes get the town car, sometimes get the business class or better. I've even got first class, but I, I can't get the whole schlemiel. You know? <laughs> I can't get all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd love to see what someone's thinking when they're sitting in their airplane seat, getting ready to go, and you come walking in and sit next to them. They've got to just be thinking, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. The last time I flew, which was a couple of years ago, was to uh, I was in St. Louis for a big Halloween show. Um, and... Uh, I I had to go they insisted I go to California uh, to get my head molded for Death House uh -huh. <laughs> okay well they I, so I thought well I'm going to be in St. Louis that's a, probably at least a, a, two, a third of the way there it'll save me less <laughs> time in the plane right yeah. so uh, I said well you know I'll come out on Monday, whatever the date was, and they go, okay, so they just play, they paid for the round trip ticket, no hotel or nothing, so I had to fly out, fly back, okay? Well, what I didn't know is the hotel that I stay at when I'm in St. Louis, that I've stayed at for years, they have a van driver, shuttle driver, I've talked to them millions <laughs> of times, but I've never had reason to use them for anything because I'm always in, in my car. Yeah. You know, so I get this all, you know, planned out and everything. And I call the hotel, uh, you know, the shuttle driver can take me to the airport. Oh, no, we don't go that far. Because it was, uh, I, would, I stay in a hotel in South County and the, and the, and the, and the <laughs> Wouldn't airport. Wouldn't that be a common destination people wanted to go to? You well, you would think so, you know, yeah. but... Uh, so, uh, cheap bastard that I am, I didn't want to pay for it. I didn't want to pay for a town car. So I, I said, well, I'll drive myself up there. So to make this trip work, right, uh, I, I, had to, I had to be at the airport like at 
four four o'clock or four thirty in the morning. So it's a half hour drive from the hotel to the to the airport, St. Louis Airport. Of course, I got to get up. I got to get comb curried and you know fit for civilization. <laughs> That takes a little bit of time, so I got I, I, I had a wake up call for like one or one thirty, and uh, okay, so I'm up at one thirty. Follow me on this. Follow this right. timeline. Right. I'm up at one thirty. I'm dressed by you know showered, coffee, all that other crap. Uh, say three thirty. Yeah. Head to the airport. Get to the airport. Now you know we all. You can imagine I'm nervous flying anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I get there, they flew me on Southwest, there's no, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, assigned seating, uh, you know, it's like first come, first serve. So, uh, anyway, I get it, I get, I did get bulkhead, but I got an aisle seat, which I don't like, I like the window, because I want to watch him for them little, I want to watch for them little, I want to watch for them little goomers on the wing, you know, terror at 20,000 feet, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, it was a three-seater, right? And a very large woman, probably bigger than you, <laughs> uh, ended up sitting in the middle seat. So this is how I rode all the way out, you know. <laughs> well, we go do the do the makeup thing, okay. And, uh, it's hot and sweaty in the studio, right? You know, and I guess I was starting to get a little ripe or something, you know. And whenever I'm in Los Angeles, I like to go to this place called Zanku Chicken. It's uh, Armenian-style chicken. And they got this killer, killer garlic dip. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go right now. Let's end this interview. We'll hop on an airplane. <laughs> and we're no, we're gonna jump in the car and go, man. We're gonna get a, uh, it's gonna be a fast car. Yeah. Uh, but this stuff's so good, you know. Anyway, so I, I, uh, I had to, you know, my driver to pick me up at the airport. I said, man, can, you know, can we go down to the post office and uh, we'll go get some Zonko chicken and I'll buy dinner. He goes, yeah, that'd be great. So I fired down a bunch of this garlic stuff, right? So now my, my flight is, I don't know what time, it was like five or six o'clock in the afternoon, okay? So I get on the plane. I've been in this shirt for several hours, I've been sweating in it, you know, and stuff like that. Garlic. So, yeah, garlic, right? And uh, I, I uh, appealed to the mercy of the, of, the, of the gate agent. I said, listen, I said, you know, is there any way I, I can get the, a bulkhead, you know? And she goes, go on, go on, get on the plane now. So I got, I got in, you know, I got the good seat. And people started coming in. And everybody, I don't know, they just looked at me or smelled me or something. <laughs> and, they, and, they, and they kept past. A little, a little Asian girl sat down on the, in, on the window seat. She lasted about 10 minutes and then she got up and left. Uh, and then nobody sat with me, right? So I had all three seats to myself. And that was a blessing in disguise. Well, not, because I'll tell you what, all right, I've been up since 1.30 the day before, pretty much awake the whole time, mm -hmm. except when I fell asleep when they were holding my head, yeah. which was just a little catnap. Uh, I stretched out in that seat, boy. Because <laughs> I didn't get back. I didn't get back to uh, to St. Louis till uh, I don't know, almost like twenty four twenty four hours later. Yeah, you know? uh, that little catnap saved me. And yeah. I, was able, I was able to drive back to the hotel. <laughs> Hollywood life, man. I can only imagine. <laughs> yeah. It sounds awesome, though. Yeah, but sometimes even flying first class isn't. You know, it, it, it's hey, yeah. yeah, yeah. Depends on the size of the airplane and stuff like that. All right, so you had a movie come out by, what, this past January, uh, Slasher.com. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it seemed like it was a story about these people, they go meet or whatever, and then they run into you and your family. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. What was that like, uh, shooting that, getting in? Okay, well, <laughs> it's a movie I didn't want to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I'm very glad I did, because uh, uh, not only did I have a blast, but I also actually got my first individual nomination for an acting award for a supporting actor award uh, in a couple of film festivals. Yeah. So uh, when I started reading the script, it lays out every horror movie trope that there is, you know. <laughs> and I'm going, oh man, this, you know, I, I don't know. And then by the time I got to the end of it, it's, it it flip flops on itself and then flip flops back again and it, it like blows your mind when you find when yeah. you, when when the final reveal you know uh, and we shot it uh, in Missouri 
outside of Columbia, Missouri. Had a blast, made some really good friends, and uh, very happy I did it. Yeah, I, yeah, it looked like it was a very well produced movie and stuff too. It was, yeah. yeah. How about uh, any other new projects coming out? Uh, yes, yes, uh, 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 Tommy. I've got something I'm very excited about. It's one of my the, my latest movie that's not released yet. It's called uh, Live, uh, Live Ride Hard. Jesus Christ, Ride Hard, Live Free. It's really cool, man. Yeah. It's a post apocalyptic biker movie. I have no idea how I got cast, <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, 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 it's pretty cool. We shot it out in the desert uh, uh, on the California Nevada border. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, it, it, well, the fact that I'm here right now, uh, I think I'm going to live a long time because if that movie didn't kill me, nothing, <laughs> nothing will. Oh, oh my God, it was 105, 106, 107. Oh, man, yeah. We're riding motorcycles and fighting and all that <laughs> crap. Oh my God. You know, did they let you keep the bike or anything cool no, like that? <laughs> no, the bike belonged to the executive producer. But I got a good, I got a good story about this, uh, how this all came together. If you want to hear it, oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, my managers. My manager calls me up. She goes, "All right, I'm working on this deal for you. It's a it's a biker movie out in the out in the desert." And I said, "Okay, that's cool." And when your when your rep is putting a deal together, she just gives you the high spots, you know. And you, she doesn't tell you everything that's going on, and you know how much they're arguing about money and stuff. And uh, so she calls she calls me up, gave me a progress report. Goes, "Oh, the director's a really nice guy. He lives in Las Vegas." Okay, that's all right. That's fine. Uh, so finally, the deal got put together, and they send me the the script and stuff like that, and I'm reading it. Page seventeen, interior Sconer's Motorcycle Clubhouse Night. Well, Sconer's is a real outlaw motorcycle club, <laughs> <laughs> and they have a big presence in Nevada. That's all I. So that's so far. That's all I know yeah. about. All I know about the people doing the movie is the director lives in Nevada. So I'm thinking, uh huh. So I wonder if he was cruising the strip one night, saw a bunch of sconers outside a bar, and said, "Honey, pull over. Let me get a picture. Those would look really neat in my movie." I had visions of you know twenty or thirty <laughs> sconers visiting the set, you know, to, to uh, set us straight. You know what I mean? Uh, so I called my manager and I said, "Judy, uh, do these people know that they're using a real motorcycle club uh, in the movie?" She goes, "I don't know. Let me find out." An hour or two later, she calls me back. She goes, yeah, it's okay. The executive producer is a member of another motorcycle club. <laughs> nice, nice. So, well, I had a blast, man. I mean, that was a, one of the funnest things I've ever done. It ranks right up there. That's, uh, you know, it, it is one of the funnest movies I've ever done. Because um, think about it. I got to ride Harleys in the desert. I got to shoot semi-automatic weapons. Got to hang out with a real 1% uh, motorcycle club, and I got to menace teenage girls and not go to jail. <laughs> yeah, beat that. Wow. Yeah. All right. So uh, this this is all wrapped up. Where do we go from here? Uh, any idea where we're going with the next project? Or uh, No, not, not really, but I, I've got to tell you something I just found out recently. It's very exciting to me, and it should be exciting to you guys, too. Uh, Erie. The Film Commission in Erie is gearing up to brand Erie slash Northwestern PA as the home of the million dollar movie. And uh, they're gonna do one in August. They're gonna shoot scenes at the Crawford County Fair. I read this in the, I get the Erie paper every once in a while. And I saw this article, they did a press conference. So I looked into it a little bit more and I saw that uh, somebody had posted something on Facebook about this movie and uh, it was, it was a friend of a friend, you know, on, on the Facebook. So I called my my friend and I said, "Do you know this guy that posted this article?" He went, "Yeah, I do. I know him personally." And I said, "Well, can you call him and ask him? Uh, I want to meet these people." So I went up to Erie uh, about a week ago to introduce myself to the uh, film commissioner and tell him I want to be on board. Man. Absolutely, yeah, that's awesome. There's man. nothing that would make me happier than to see. Uh, your local area expert. A million, a million, yeah. uh, well, not a million, but maybe, you know, uh, uh, right. a lot of million dollar movies 
Yeah, made yeah. in in this area. Yeah, yeah NWPA, man. Yeah. You know, there, well, there's such a diversity with the uh, the scenery, the landscapes around here. We've got country, we've got city, we've got anything you want. Yes, Erie, Erie Lake Erie can double uh, as the ocean. Oh yeah, yeah, Very that's easy. a good point. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> nobody knows again that doesn't know if it's salty or not. <laughs> hey, this is fresh water. Yeah. What are the what are the what are the pirates doing in fresh water? Yeah. 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 It seems like that's kind of a phenomenon that's actually going on in the Rust Belt. Is there starting to be a lot of action like with Cleveland and Erie? And well, Pittsburgh's places. getting huge and stuff too. Yeah, yeah. there's been a lot of stuff. Yeah, Pittsburgh's know. been percolating along for yeah. a while. You know, I mean, I think they did one of the Batman movies down yeah. there. Uh, so they're, they're okay, but they're, oh, man, come on. Yeah. Stay out here, live out here in the country and work on movies. <laughs> That'd be all right, yeah. I mean, I don't want to go to Pittsburgh. I lived to Pittsburgh 45 years ago or whatever, and I had enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the opposite of riding the Harley in the desert, riding it in Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> Other than the tunnels would be cool when you got the pipes. Well, yeah, but the first thing you know I'd do, I'd head over to 79 North. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, uh, of course, the Halloween season's going to be coming along, and so you'll have all kinds of fun stuff going on with that. Uh, any big plans for the uh, primetime season this year? Well, nothing I, uh, nothing I want to talk about right now because mm -hmm. it's all in... Uh, Negotiation, yes, most of it, but I will be going back to one of my favorite places, a Pinhead's Graveyard. Actually, I was just reading about that today. That's uh, that seems like that's quite the event down there. That yes, guy, that guy seems like he's quite the collector of uh, everything, really, like well, or memorabilia and stuff. Yeah. You know, I, a couple of years ago, I did a movie called Death House, right? Yep, you know, and Kane Hodder rip I, I, I rip out Kane Hodder's guts and then he rips off my face, right? So, unbeknownst to me, the guy that runs Pinhead Graveyard. Because I got, a, I got a, you know, I got a surprise for you. So we went and did a local TV show, and uh, he had this thing all wrapped up. You know, I have no idea what it is. And he goes, "I got a surprise for you." Uh -huh. And it turns out he is a collector, and he bought the the dummy. Oh, nice! And yeah. and revealed it on, <laughs> on 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 the TV show. It was pretty cool. The mannequin of you that gets the feature. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, he's a, he's a big collector, and he you know it, he goes to a lot of conventions and stuff. He, um, you know, you've been doing that. Uh, what, I've seen something you've been on, doing that for like six years now. Yeah, well, I think yeah. I think this will be my fifth year. I can't uh, yeah. remember. I've lost count. Yeah. I I keep telling him. I said, listen. I said, for the good of your business, <laughs> you have to fire me and hire somebody <laughs> new. You know? He goes, no, nope, no. Nope, it's a Halloween tradition. We got to have you down here. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. Who, who are some of the, the most interesting or notorious or famous people that you've met when you're out doing the uh, conventions and the, the holiday stuff? Well, I got to go first to my good buddy, Kane Hodder. Yep. We have so much fun when we're at a convention together, you know. He seems like, <laughs> like oh, cool my guy. God. I hope to meet him someday. Yeah. Oh, we have a blast, you know. Uh, a couple of years ago, maybe more than that, uh, Kane arrived at a convention several days early, right? I roll in. Was, come on, Ari, I want to show you something. And he'd gotten us corner tables, right? And he <laughs> stole, he stole per uh, uh, or, requisition, <laughs> requisition <laughs> furniture from the lobby, and he made us a little lounge in the corner. Who's going to argue with you today? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. 